One of the major issues that a lot of people have encountered with GNS3 in the past is the complexity of setting up the GNS3 VM and the GNS3 GUI and making that work together properly. There have been lots of issues, especially on Windows, if you're using VMware Workstation Player. A lot of people have had a lot of issues. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get GNS3 up and working very, very quickly. We're gonna get GNS3 working on a Windows 10 computer in a few minutes. Okay, so let's see how long it takes me to get VMware Workstation Player downloaded and installed, import the GNS3 VM, and get a GNS3 network up and running. Now in this example, I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling it from my Mac. That just makes it easier to do the recordings. But all the configuration and installation is gonna be done on this Windows 10 laptop. The first thing you need to do is go to gns3.com and then click free download. I'm not gonna download the GNS3 GUI for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm simply gonna download the GNS3 VM. And in my example, I'm gonna download the GNS3 VM for VMware Workstation and Fusion. I'm gonna click save to download that to my local computer. It's about 500 meg. All you need to do now is wait for that to download. But while that's downloading, let's go to vmware.com. And what we're gonna download here is VMware Workstation Player. This is free software from VMware. Now at the time of this recording, they're still showing 15.5 here, but 16 has actually been released. So when I click on the download now link, notice the version that I'm downloading is 16.0. So I'm downloading VMware Workstation Player. That's a hypervisor that allows me to host the GNS3 VM on my Windows computer, and I'm downloading the GNS3 VM. That's all I'm gonna download. Okay, so VMware Player has downloaded. I'm still waiting for the GNS3 VM to download. But what I'm gonna do is show in folder, and I'm gonna double click the VMware Player executable to install the software. And click yes to allow the app to make changes to my device. The VMware Workstation Player 16 wizard starts. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna to agree to the license agreement and click next and I'm gonna click next again. I'm not going to join the custom experience program. I'm gonna click next, click next again, and click install. Now one thing the software will do is it will add additional network adapters to your computer. So under my network adapters, at the moment I don't see VMware Workstation adapters, but as the software installs, you'll notice adapters get installed and there's one and here's another. So it's normal behavior for VMware to install additional adapters. Okay, installation has completed, I'll click finish. So first step is completed, install VMware Workstation. Now we can import the GNS3 VM into VMware Workstation. So the GNS3 VM has successfully downloaded. I'll show that in folder. And what I'm gonna do is extract the zip file. File has been extracted, so under downloads, I've now got GNS3 VM, VMware Workstation, and there's an OVA. So what I'll do is start up VMware Workstation Player. I'm gonna use it for free for non-commercial use. You can enter a license agreement if you wanna use it for commercial reasons, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click Continue and click finish. Now I need to go to player, file, open. I'm gonna to go to my downloads directory, open the workstation directory, and open the OVA, and click import to import the GNS3 VM. You just need to wait for that import to complete. Once it's imported, you can edit the virtual machine settings. As an example, you may wanna allocate more RAM, you may wanna allocate more CPUs. For the moment, I'm gonna leave everything at default, but if you wanna run larger topologies, you're gonna to need to increase these values. So add more memory as an example, or add more processes. You also wanna make sure that you've got virtualized Intel VTX enabled or AMD V enabled. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna click play virtual machine. 
Virtual machine is now booting up. As you can see, the GNS3 VM has booted. Very important, we want to see KVM support available is true. You're going to want to have VTX enabled in the BIOS of your computer. You're going to want to have WSL version 2 disabled or Hyper-V disabled if you're using this within VMware Workstation Player. Okay, so we're told that we can launch the web UI and go to 192.168.52.128. That's the GNS3 web UI. So I'm going to open up a web browser, in this case Chrome, and I'm going to browse to 192.168.52.128. And as you can see, a web UI is displayed. Now if I go to Player, Manage Virtual Machine Settings, Network adapter, notice it's set to host only and the second adapter is set to NAT. Rather than using NAT, you may want to use Bridged so that you can connect to the devices in your virtual machine remotely. I'll cover that in a separate video. What I'm going to do here is add a blank project and let's call it GNS3 Project 1. You probably want to use a better name than that, but that'll get us started. As you can see now, I've got a web UI running on my laptop connecting to the GNS3 VM. And what I can do now is click add a node and I'll drag two VPCS devices into my topology and I'll drag a ethernet switch into my topology. What I can do is click on them and drag them around. I'll click on add link, click on the PC and then connect the ethernet link. Click on the switch again, take the second ethernet port and connect it to the second PC. Click on this little arrow and start all nodes in my topology. I'll minimize that. Right click on the VPCS device, open up a web console. You can see a web console has started. What I'll do now is move these devices up so we've got more space. And then I'll right click, open web console. And as you can see, I've got a web console to PC1. I can move this around and I could make it smaller. So I'll make it a bit smaller. Right click on PC2, open up web console. There's PC2 on PC1. Click here and let's give it an IP address of 10.1.1.1 with a mask of that. On PC2, IP address 10.1.1.2, mask like that. Back on PC1, let's ping 10.1.1.2 and notice I can ping from PC1 to PC2. Back on PC2, can I ping PC1? And the answer is yes, I can. Now you can make your topology look more pretty, but there you go, I've got a GNS3 topology up and running. I'm running this within the GNS3 VM, within VMware Workstation Player on my Windows 10 laptop. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more pretty. I'm gonna right click and go to change symbol, and I'm gonna look for a host symbol. So let's say this one and click apply. Right click here change symbol, I'll change it to host and click apply on the switch, right click, change symbol, and I'll search for switch and select that switch symbol and click apply. And there you go, I've got a nicer topology with two VPCS devices and a switch and they can ping each other. Okay, but now you may want to add other devices to your topology. So you might wanna add a vendor switch like Cumulus or Cisco or Arista to your topology. Now to add other vendor devices, click on the GNS3 icon and go to new template. I'm gonna leave the default install new appliance from the GNS3 server, click next. And here you can search for different vendors such as Cumulus VX or iOS V. I'm gonna select Cisco IOS V layer two and click install. Various images are shown here. I can't provide you with images. You need to 
provide your own image. So get that from the vendor's website. In my example, I've got this iOS V image over here, which is the one that's listed here. If you don't have the image, click download, and that's gonna take you to the vendor's website. So in this example, to Cisco's website, where you can log in and download an image. So you'll have to download the image yourself. If you click on the download button, it'll take you to the relevant vendor's website. In my example, I'm gonna click import, and I'm gonna select the image that I've downloaded. I'm told that the image has been imported successfully. I can see a little tick here. So I'm gonna click create, and use the default name, and click add template. That means that my node has been added to GNS3 and I can use it. It's using the default image here, but you can change that by clicking on GNS3, go to preferences. In my example, this is a QMU image, so I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna select Cisco iOS V layer two, go to general settings, and what I can do now is change the symbol I'll search for switch. This is a layer three switch, so I'll select that icon, click choose symbol, and click save. And then I'll go back to my project, click add node. And what I can do now is drag that Cisco IOS V switch into the topology. And I'll drag another one. So what I've got now are two Cisco IOS V switches, I can now connect them via various interfaces. So I'll connect the two switches via the gigabit 00 interfaces and start the switches up. So right click start, right click web console. And as you can see now, the first switch is booting up. I'll minimize that, open up another web console. And you can see the second switch is now booting up. That's how simple it is these days to get GNS3 up and running and add devices to your network. I could, as an example, add a VPCS device to the network once again. So add that here. So add these two devices to my Cisco network, something like that. Again, you can change the symbols of these devices if you don't like the way they look. You could change the template if you wanted to, but in my example, I've just changed the individual devices. Going back to my switches, I can see that the two switches are booting up. Now, I don't have a lot of RAM and CPU on this GNS3 VM. If you're gonna run Cisco devices, you're probably gonna to wanna to change your virtual machine settings and allocate more RAM and CPU to your virtual machine. I've only got two gig of RAM in this virtual machine, so these two devices are taking their time booting up. They're running quite slow. You probably wanna allocate more RAM than what I've got here, but as an example, I could give the first switch a name, let's say switch one, switch two, change the name to switch two, go on to interface VLAN one, no shut it, and this is switch two, so I'll give it an IP address of 10.1.1.252 in this example. on switch one, interface VLAN one, no shut it, IP address 10.1.1.251 slash 24 mask. And hopefully this switch will be able to ping the second switch. And there you go. So switch one can ping switch two, and switch two can ping switch one. Okay, so I've now shown you how to build multiple topologies in GNS3 doing everything through a browser. I'm not using the GNS3 GUI here. All I'm using is the GNS3 VM, 
and I'm connecting to that through a browser. I'm doing everything through the browser. As an example, I could right click on my switch and open that in a new tab. And notice I've got a separate tab for my switch. I'm doing everything through a browser. Okay, so GNS3 have made a lot of improvements to their web UI. They're still working on this and improving the web UI, but it's a lot better than it was in the past, and you don't have to use the GUI application if you don't want to. This makes it a lot easier to host the VM on an ESXi server or host it in the cloud, as an example, and I'll cover that in separate videos. I'm David Bombal. I wanna wish you all the very best. Yeah.